Hello everyone, this is Ray Savage with Cambium Networks. Thanks for joining us. Today we have a very special presentation. Uh, Lucia Valbanese from our development team is going to talk about the uh, PMP Capacity Planner. So, Lucia? Thank you, Ray. So today we are talking about the PMP 450 Capacity Planner that you find on the Cambium website. This is actually a planner that covers both PMP and PDP and the 450, 450i, and 450m products. This tool has uh, three tabs, the link budget tab, the network planning tab, and the sector scope calculator tab. The second and the third tab are independent of each other, but they both use inputs from the first tab, the link budget. So the configuration has to be done on the link budget tab. In all the tabs, the cells that you see in green are the ones that you can configure. All the cells in white are either calculated or it's just an information, for example, on EIRC limits or power limits. The uh, values that you can configure here in the link budget tab uh, sometimes revert to default values because not all combination of inputs are valid. So it is recommended that you start the configuration from the top to the bottom. For each of the inputs, uh, you have a drop-down menu that shows you the options that you can select. So this is uh, pretty easy to configure. You can select the frequency band and the region, for example. And under the AP model, you have three options, the 450, 450i, and 450m. If you select either 450 or 450i, you will see that the second tab shows network planning. If you select 450M, there is a special 450M network planning tab that shows up because there are some calculations that are related just to the 450M platform. Then you can uh, select the channel bandwidth. You can leave the default carrier frequency or put the carrier frequency that you need to use for the sector. And the mode is either PNP or PTP. If you select PTP, the first thing you notice is that the other two tabs disappear because they only are valid for PMP mode. And also there are some inputs that appear only in PTP mode, for example, the base station, the, the, the backhaul, transmit output power, and the MIMO mode for PTP. So these are inputs that will only appear in a PTP mode. If you select PMP, then the input valid for PMP will appear. You can select in the AP antenna system the antenna that you want. If you select third-party antenna, then you will have to input for the gain and the loss, or you can use the integrated or any of the canyon antenna. You can also indicate if you have connectorized subscribers in the sector, and if you do, here you can put the gain and the cable loss for the subscribers. These set of inputs are to configure the frame, so you can select the duty cycle, the range, either in miles or in kilometers, and the number of contention slots. Then for the environment, you can select either line of sight, near line of sight, or no line of sight. This will change the calculation in the link budget. And you can also indicate if you have any interference measured in your sector. If you select yes, then you will have the option of indicating the interference level and the interfere and the antenna you use to measure the interference. Or you can just um, leave the selections, you know, if there is no interference measure. The percentage of attempts with an even path, this is the percentage of the subscribers in the sector that are expected to use a MIMO A or a single stream uh, modulation. So if you have uh, some subscribers that are in no line of sight deployments, then you can put the percentage of them in here because they will likely use a MIMO A um, modulation. Once you have configured the sector, then you can scroll down and you can select the subscriber that uh, you want to display. Again, in the drop-down menu, you will see all the options. Here we have selected the PNC450 integrated subscriber. So all the white cells are calculated, and this section is showing you the link budget. The downlink is here to the left and the uplink to the right. You will see all the relevant parameters, like the transmit power, the antenna gain on both sides, and the sensitivity for each of the modulation levels. Based on these inputs, then the link budget is calculated for the downlink and the uplink. Notice that the sensitivity values for MIMO A and MIMO B at the same modulation level are listed as the same value. Now, in MIMO-A, you would also have a combining gain. 
but the rate adapt module in the radio will always try to select a MIMO B, which is the dual stream mode, before it will select a MIMO A. The MIMO A is selected only if there is a large imbalance between the two paths, and in this case, you would have a good combining gain. This is why the two numbers are the same, and this is a conservative assumption. If you keep scrolling down, then you have a section showing the range and the throughput. And again, it's divided into downlink and uplink, so you can see what range you can have at each modulation level. And in this section here, you will see the downlink, the uplink, and the total throughput corresponding to each modulation level. The capacity calculation here to the right estimates the sector capacity uh, based on some assumptions. The first assumption is that the subscribers are evenly distributed in the area that you're covering out to the range that you have selected up here. In this case, it was three miles. Uh, the other assumption is that the, uh, all the subscribers are active equally. So you don't have some power users and some that are not active. All the subscribers generate the same amount of traffic in this uh, calculation. Also, the calculation takes into account the antenna gain is the largest for the subscribers that face in DAT, but the subscribers that are on the side of the sector will have a reduced antenna gain, and that's also taken into account in the calculation. So in this example, you can expect the sector uh, from the AT point of view to support about 45 megabits per second in the downlink and 14 in the uplink. The plot down here is showing visually the modulations that are supported in the sector. You can visualize the AP being here at the tip, and all the subscribers in this light blue area will use an 8x modulation. The subscribers in the purple area will use a 6x modulation, and the subscribers in the green area will use a 4x modulation. So in this tab, you see all the calculations that are referred to a specific subscriber, in this case, the 450 integrated. But you may have a sector with a mix of subscribers. So to cover that case, then you're going to use the second tab, the network planning tab. In this tab, in the top portion, you're given the opportunity to put the distribution of the subscribers uh, that you have in the sector. Again, the green cells are the ones that you can input, and the white cells are either calculated, or some of them are values taken from the link budget tab. For example, the downlink data, the max range, and the percentage of subscribers in MIMO A mode are all taken from the first step. So if you need to make any changes, you need to go back in the new budget tab and update these values. In here, you can see the distribution of the subscribers. In this example, we have 50% of subscribers with an integrated antenna and 50% with a reflector. The plot shows you the assumption. The assumption is that all the subscribers that are closer to the AT will use the lower antenna gain. So the right area of the subscribers that are closer to the AT will have the integrated antenna. While you're going to use the reflector of the subscribers, the 50% of the subscribers that are far from the access point. Based on this distribution, then the average downlink and uplink capacity is calculated here. Now the next question is, how many subscribers can I support in this sector? So that depends on the type of plans you want to sell to your subscribers and input like the oversubscription rate. In this case, we have uh, one enterprise plan A, a residential plan B, and also a blended plan, which is simply a percentage of the plan A and a percentage of the plan B. For each one, again, in all the green cells, you can put the, the requirements for the throughput in the downlink and uplink direction for each of the plans, and the distribution of the plans, the percentage of plans that you plan on having for your subscribers. Also, the uh, oversubscription rate is input here in these two cells, and it's separate for the enterprise and the residential customers, because you may want to have a lower oversubscription rate for your enterprise customers compared to the residential customers. So based on all these inputs, then the tool calculates the necessary uh, the requirements for the downlink throughput per user and the uplink throughput per user. Based on these requirements and the capacity that was calculated up here, then we can calculate how many subscribers we can support in the downlink and in the uplink direction. Now, the total number of users will be the lower of the two, because if I can support 43 in the downlink and 13 in the uplink, then of course I can support the 13 total. 
So in this case, for example, if I only had enterprise customers and the plans are all, all symmetric, then the selection of a 75% downlink data was not optimal because I can see that my downlink capacity is much higher than my uplink capacity. So in this case, I would go in the link budget tab and change the downlink data, for example, to 50%. The calculation is done similarly for the residential, and the blended, like I said, is simply a percentage. In this case, it's 50-50 between the two plans. And you can see how many subscribers you can support. Another input is the, the percentage of high-priority DCs. The uh, AT can support the 238 DCs, which means up to 238 subscribers if the subscribers are configured only with a low-priority DC. If you have a percentage of users with a high-priority DC enabled, then the total number of subscribers is reduced because each uh, high-priority DC will use one additional DC. So this is used to check in case you have a large number of users supported here that you don't exceed the number of VCs that's available at the access point. Another input is the percentage of time that you expect for the broadcast and multicast traffic. If in this sector you have a lot of broadcast and multicast traffic, then you can put a percentage there so that the calculation is more accurate for your unicast traffic individual attempts. Now we said if in the late budget tab we select the 450M18, then we no longer see the network planning tab, but we see a new, a new tab, the 450M network planning tab. Now these are some aspects that are the same as the original 450, 450M network planning tab, but there are some aspects that are unique to 450M because of the new MIMO mode. In the top portion you see that Again, you can put the input, uh, the distribution of the subscribers that you have. Again, we have 50% integrated and 50% with the reflector. And uh, the, with the capacity without new MIMO is calculated up here. Now, in this tab, you also have the option of inputting the multiplexing gain for the multi-user MIMO feature, which will be used to calculate the capacity in new MIMO mode. The multiplexing gain is related to the average group size, but it also takes into account the fact that when subscribers are grouped, they will likely use a lower modulation level than when they are not grouped. So for example, if you see an average group size of 3.5, then the multiplexing gain could be, like in this example, 2.8, to take into account that the modulation level is reduced when the subscribers are grouped. In the service plan, the idea is similar to the tab we discussed earlier, but this is slightly different because it separates the high priority traffic from the low priority traffic. The reason is that in your MIMO, the low priority traffic is grouped, but the high priority traffic is not. So in this example, we have three plants, platinum, gold, and silver. You can input the percentage of the distribution of the plants, and then the throughput requirements that you need for each of the traffic types, voice, browsing, or streaming, both in the uplink and in the downlink. You can also input the oversubscription rate per traffic type. For example, you can expect that during your busy hour, one in eight of your subscribers will be busy with voice traffic, but maybe just the oversubscription rate for the streaming can be just 1.5 because you expect more people to be streaming at the same time. Based on these calculations, then again, you can calculate the number of downlink plants, uplink plants, and the total plants will be the lower of the two. And the number of attempts, again, checks the number of high-priority DCs you have configured here that you don't exceed the number of DCs that are available in the access point. In this tab, another thing you can do is to input your attempts directly. So in the top portion, you have to make an assumption, or you have to know the distribution of the antennas that you have at the subscribers. This is useful if you don't have a sector deployed already. But let's imagine you have an existing sector, so you know what modulation level each subscriber is actually using. In that case, then it's easier to just input how many subscribers you have at each modulation level, and based on this distribution of your sector, then you can calculate the expected capacity in your MIMO mode and without your MIMO. And the calculation is done the same way as above. You can um, input the distribution of your plants, the characteristics of your plants, and you can calculate how many subscribers you can support. 
In this example, we have 50 users in an existing uh, sector, but doing the calculations, we see we can support up to 83. So in this way, we can see how many more users we can add uh, to the sector. The last tab is the sector throughput calculator. This is also a tab that you would use if you have a sector already deployed. For example, you might have all this information on the subscribers in your sector in an Excel spreadsheet that you can copy and paste here. You can input for each subscriber the distance from the access point, the antenna system it's using, and the, and the mode if, if they are operating in MIMO A or MIMO B. You also have the option of inputting any MIR that you may have configured for the subscriber. Based on the set of inputs of your existing sector, then the tool calculates the expected modulation mode that would be used for this case. And then if you scroll to the right, you will see here the distribution of the subscribers that you have in this sector. Based on this distribution, then the capacity is calculated in the downlink uplink and the total. Similarly to what we saw in the previous tab, you can also input the subscribers directly. If you have a sector deployed and you see how many subscribers are at each modulation level, instead of individually adding the distances uh, from each subscriber, you can simply put here how many you have at each modulation level. And based on this distribution, then the calculation would be performed again on the average downlink and uplink and total capacity. We also offer a user guide for this tool on the Canyon website. And uh, you can look uh, through this. There is a description on all the inputs and the tabs. And there is also an example of the calculations that are performed in the, in the tool. 